Hi, this is Mrs. Mays at Vista Ridge High School. Your child is in my chemistry class, and I wanted to go over a few highlights of my course. First of all, here's how you can support your kid when they're trying to master chemistry. First of all, please understand that chemistry can be difficult. It's a tough course, especially for high school kids that may struggle with focus and concentration. Taking notes is the easy part of class, so I've moved the note-taking to home. When a kid goes to my website, they click on the unit they need, and here's the notes in a video podcast that's published on YouTube. So anywhere that you have access to YouTube, you can do your homework, which is kind of a bummer. We've taken away their excuses, right? If you know how to run YouTube, you can do your chemistry homework. Now, solving the problems is harder. I used to send this home for homework, but kids would struggle. So now I switched it. We do the notes at home, do the homework in class. That way I'm there to help you. And you have classmates that you can check with and, and make sure you're doing it right. I'd rather students study the right way to do things than go home and do everything wrong and have to fix it when they come back. So students will have chemistry homework every night. Their homework is usually on YouTube. Check the Twitter feed at Viera Chem on my website where you can subscribe follow me on Twitter, and then you'll have homework updates coming to you through the Twitter feed where you just click the link to the podcast I've assigned that day. And you don't even have to have a Twitter account. You can just go to my website and scroll down to the Twitter feed so that you as a parent can see that um, I've assigned something or maybe, hey, you've got a test coming up Friday. So even if they say, I did my homework, you know they've got a test and you can say, hey, Studying looks like this. Book is open, notes in front of you. That's how you get ready for a test. Grades are determined by use of a scale for every unit of study. Let me show you our scale for unit one. Here's our scale for unit one, where the level three is mastery. So we set a three at the level of A minus. If they've mastered the content, they should have an A. A two means that they can get the basics but they're not really getting the, the complete picture. So a 2 is a C. That makes a 2.5 or so to be a B in my class. A 1 means the student cannot do the skill without help. They can only do it with help. So that's not really a passing grade yet because they're not doing it on their own. So if they can't do it independently, they won't be passing it. And a zero means I haven't seen any evidence that the student has mastered the skill. So we have two different skills in our first unit. And a level three will be an A. The scale describes the levels of achievement and honors level may have to go all the way up to a level five. I consider everything the student demonstrates in class through labs and quizzes and tests to show me what they know. And that allows me to place them on the scale. Let me show you what it looks like in the parent portal side. So, let's see. If you click on an assignment, then you'll get access to the file that I handed to the students. Let's download that. So this is that particular assignment I gave. When we're looking at specific skills, if you click the skill that's ranked out of four points, then that skill is something I've measured from a lab or a quiz. And there's the scale score, 2.5. That is a B. Sadly, though, Infinite Campus interprets that as a 62.5, and I can't force Infinite Campus to stop putting percents there for you. But for now, please look only at the scale score rather than the percent. I don't want any kid to get in trouble for a B because Infinite Campus thinks it's a 63%. Here's what's helpful to you, though. If it's not at least a 3, then we want to work on this. So here's something that's a 2. This is the weakness for this student because it's the lowest score. So let's find out how can we provide support and help him get better. Here's a list in the description of all the things I have assigned for that particular topic. And you could ask your kid, hey, which of these things have you tried? Can I see this in your notebook? 
Show me how that went for you. Did you get them right? Do we need to work on this? Have you tried the reading? So you can have more effective conversations with your kids about their grades than, well, I turned it in, but my teacher hasn't put in the grade yet. That's not what it's about. We have some work to do because you, there's a two. And what work should we do? Well, let's pick something from this list and do it. That helps you, I hope, as a parent to have a bit more power in your conversations with your kids about their grades. So in my class, there will be no percentages or averages. And as they progress through, new information simply replaces old information rather than averaging all the grades together. New information will replace old information. So what they did last week is not going to be averaged in to where they are this week. And here's why I think this. No averages? Well, I'm a coach. And there was not a penalty for practice. Now let me put it in my coach's term. Who's the best discus thrower? That was my sport. Here's one of my discus throwers that I grew up with. So in discus throwing, we don't consider the average of all the practice throws for the week or for the season. Top throw out of six in the final competition. We don't consider all your throws the week before which is sometimes frustrating because sometimes you have a bad week. But we consider the most current evidence without taking an average. The same is true for swimming. The Olympics isn't won by who has the best average time, but rather who won that competition on that day. So we're not going to use averages to determine grades in my class. And I'm not going to use percents. Your student will be ranked on a scale according to the evidence they've provided me about how well they've mastered the material. Honors chemistry is available to your students. Um, they have to meet some pretty high criteria, like an 85% on every unit test. They have two extra labs to complete at the time when their learning has advanced enough to understand the content of the labs. They will complete a genius hour project where they spend every Friday pursuing an interest or passion of their own and their proposals have to be approved by me, and then they get to work on those projects independently while we work on uh, review and practice in chemistry class. They also have to complete 10 hours total of community service for the entire year, including maybe helping at family science night or at a um, cool science fair or festival. And then there are two extra units in the curriculum for honors chemistry thermochem and equilibrium that would help them to be successful in their next higher level science class that they would move on to in the next year. So there's no need to change your schedule. Honors students would just work more independently, show mastery, and move on. They don't have to wait for the whole class to understand the concept. If they get it, they can move on to the next thing. If you have questions or concerns about how to help your kids succeed or anything that you see coming home that you want help with, please contact me by email because I share a room. The phone is not as reliable as finding my email. Or um, follow me on Twitter so that you can get homework updates and you can send me a direct message through there. Thank you so much for your time. Please fill out the response form at the end of this video so that I know how to help your kid the best.